with Kevin Garnett. I played with Kevin Durant. I played with LeBron twice. I played with AI. And his hunger was different. And it was, I can't put a finger on what it was, but he would, it's just how his will not to lose was. Welcome to another MVP podcast. My name is Dale, and today we're talking about Joe Smith again, explaining to us the difference between Kobe and LeBron. Check it out. Well, that next year, 2009, was like a whirlwind of trades for you. Uh, <laughs> you got traded from the Thunder to the Hornets for Tyson Chandler, but then Chandler failed his physical, so the trade was rescinded. So you went back right. to the Thunder, but then you ended up getting traded to the Cavaliers. Right. And then you get traded to the Atlanta Hawks. That was the following year. Following year. Okay, yeah, sorry. To the Hawks, yeah. I signed with the actually I signed with the Hawks as a free agent. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So that uh the trade with Charlotte, that never went through, so I didn't have to go there. So uh that that's not on my record, I don't think. <laughs> but um yeah, so I, that never went through. But yeah, um from Oklahoma. Um, the thing about it is I was at the point in my career where, um, Sam Presley, the, uh, general manager with the Thunder, you know, he didn't want to send me to a team where, you know, didn't have a, a, a championship shot. So, um, for him to, be, uh, put together a plan to get me back to Cleveland that year, you know, I really appreciate that. You know, uh, we talked about it before the trade. He told me that, uh, you know, he had a couple options on the table. And, um, you know, we kind of weighed the options and I was, you know, hoping that he could get me back to Cleveland and he pulled the strings to get me back to Cleveland and give me that shot to win the title. So um, at that point in my career, it was it was a, uh, a great move because, like I said, we weren't having a successful career down in Oklahoma City. We were, we were struggling. <laughs> well, right. And then in 2010, you became the 92nd player ever to have played a thousand games. I was the 92nd? 92nd player in oh, NBA wow. history to play a thousand games. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah, he's t- teaching me something new now. <laughs> That's a lot of games, when man. Was a thousand that? games. This was 2010. 2010. When you, were, uh, when you guys beat the Nets. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Where's my ball? They ain't give me my thousand dollars back. <laughs> my thousand game ball. <laughs> Right, and you ended up playing for the Nets. Yes. For how long? Just a half a year. I went um, a half a year before I went to got traded to the Lakers. So I, after I played my year uh, in Atlanta, I finished out the year in Atlanta. Um, uh, I signed with the Nets as a free agent, uh, spent half the season there, and then was traded to the. Uh, things weren't looking well, and once again, like in like in Oklahoma. So uh, they traded me to, to to the Lakers to have another opportunity at, you know, winning a championship. Okay, so now you join the L.A. Lakers. Yeah. With Kobe Bryant. Yeah. As well as Matt Barnes. That's my man. He's been on my show a few times. Oh, Ron yeah, Artest. that's a good guy. I've interviewed him. Lamar Odom, I've interviewed him. I mean, but you're playing with Kobe at this point. Oh, yeah. What was different with Kobe than other players you played with? Um, I think he had a different hunger. I mean, we all see it and we all we all can, uh, you know, kind of tell. But, like, it was from playing with – I played with Kevin Garnett. I played with Kevin Durant. I played with LeBron twice. I played with AI. And his hunger was different. And it was – I can't put a finger on what it was, but he would, it's just how his will not to lose was, was just different. I mean, he'd come in and uh, uh, just instruct how, how he instruct practice, how he goes through practice, um, his knowledge of the game and, and what he expects defenses to do to him. So uh, he's prepared when they, when he, when he sees it out there on the floor. I mean, there's a, there's a whole different preparation that he has for the game that, you know, you see anywhere else. Did you guys form a relationship? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I mean, uh, we, we, we talked in practice. He kind of uh, put me under his wing to kind of help explain the triangle offense to me uh, when I first got there uh, uh, and, 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 you know, kind of the defensive schemes and, you know, how they kind of operate around there. And 
Uh, so he kind of we we develop a little bit of a friendship. Well, your first game for the Lakers was a train wreck. Was a who? A train wreck. A train wreck. Yeah, you guys lost eighty five to one hundred and four to the Grizzlies. <laughs> Yeah, that was, was your that was your debut with the Lakers. I don't even think I played that night though. No, no, you did. Did I? Yeah. Oh, because in the blowout then. Yeah. I might have got the the cleanup minutes. Yeah, exactly. Did they yeah, put you so the that... in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had no effect on the game. <laughs> right. But I'm just saying. But that was how you debuted for the Lakers. Unfortunately. Yeah, that, that's a that's a tough way to debut though, uh, especially when you uh, ship to a team that you know is supposed to be a title contender. That's a tough debut right there. Right. Well, two days later, you scored your first point as a member of the team, and then, you know, you did your thing with the team. Like we've been beating the whole time this channel has been going, right? I've put up a whole bunch of different players talking about the difference between Kobe, MJ, and then LeBron. All right. So Joe Smith, he played with Kobe, and he played with LeBron. I think he played with Melo, he played with Iverson, right? And he's separating Kobe's hunger, Kobe's passion for the game, his will, right, his inner power, mental ability, all right, separating that from others, okay, from LeBron, from Durant, all right, and this is all that many of us have been trying to say for a long time, and I believe this is enough, you know, to make a Kobe Bryant better than LeBron, because they both have their gifts, but this hunger, this passion, this this type of energy that Kobe had, all right, just separates him from his peers, which at one point was LeBron as well. And it's, and it's also what separates Michael Jordan from LeBron as well. So I wholeheartedly believe if LeBron, all right, had the mental ability or the mental toughness that Kobe had, all right, he'd have at least five or six, maybe seven or eight titles, right? Because he had the ability to put himself in a position to win titles every single year. Kobe, unfortunately, he spent a, a number of years, you know, where he wasn't even in the running for a title. All right, his teams were that underwhelming, all right, that he couldn't get to the finals, even with, you know, Herculean efforts. All right, averaging 35, I think he averaged 37, scoring 70 points, all types of crazy stuff, but just was not good enough. He needed a good running mate, all-star at least, all right? But LeBron was able to put himself with, you know, superstars almost every year, you know, with Anthony Davis, Dwayne Wade, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, all right? Which gave him opportunities to win championships over and over and over in the course of a 20-year career. That's why he has a little... 10 finals appearances so that makes the difference and these are the NBA players who are saying it they're saying this for a reason so whoever's like overlooking all of this and just looking at stats I mean you are definitely misguided because Kwame Brown he played with both of these players Joe Smith played with both of these players Tyrone Lou seen both of them and they're always distinguishing Kobe something within him the innate fire within him compared to lebron who doesn't have it all right lebron who sometimes would fold folded against dallas you know he folded against orlando all right when he's on the Cavs. but we don't really see kobe folding in a you know these seven game series maybe one game or two games and you know if he's injured you can you can get him you can beat him if, if he's really that hurt all right but seven game series it's not going to happen because that hunger inside right it's just pushing him on and on you know to get better to do better to you know to give his all to the game and it's not really something that we see with lebron i'm sorry dude but that's about it so until next time